championship games up in Hickory. Um, guys, I, I mean, I love the regional championships. They're, they're great. Uh, one of my co-workers said, you know, it's half of Morganton here. I mean, Freedom really showed out. But the venues are not big enough. Coach Lewis, I mean, you were there. I mean, it's not, it's like a zoo. It was. I, I think the um, Western Regional should be held somewhere in Charlotte, either at UNC Charlotte or Davison or Queens University. Mm -hmm. um, if you look at the Eastern Regionals, you saw the capacity crowds for the Farmville Central game, and it was played at the campus of ECU. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there, there's definitely appetite for these games. And, you know, I, I just, you know, so during the, right before the Hunter Huss game and the Freedom Girls game was ending or the boys game, the crowd in the lobby was like you couldn't move, and people right. were like trying to see from the back and there were people asking for their money back because they couldn't see the floor. And it's just, it's some of the same kinds of things we saw when there was in Hickory before, which is why they had moved it to Greensboro, which I thought was a great location. Um, but, you know, I, I just want everybody to be able to see the game. You know, I don't know what it takes to to get the uh, the thing in Charlotte, but it'd be great in Charlotte, great in Greensboro, great back at, at the Joel Annex, all of those would be great. But I think, uh, and nothing is Hickory. I think they do a great job uh, putting it on. Uh, but I just think the, the crowds are too great for the venues. And now, over at the top of Valley, it seemed to be fine. When I was with Lenore Ryan, it was definitely, definitely an issue. Um, and, you know, Lenore Ryan says they hold 3,200 3, 3, capacity. and <laughs> They will pass capacity. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was it was really, it was hot, and it was really packed. And, uh, like I said, the lobby, the lobby was even full. I mean, you literally... You literally could not move, and then you know you have that that changeover when one fan base is coming in and one fan base is coming out, and I just wonder or worry that something could happen. I also think Coach Lewis, I mean uh, Coach Mitchell, you know, you talked about going through metal detectors. I also wonder should we be winding these people coming in because nobody was winding, nobody was checking. No. Just, yeah, and I just don't want anything. You know, after the fights we had last week, I just don't want anything to happen at, at one of these events because the basketball was great. It was thrilling basketball, and we're going to talk about it um, in a few minutes. But before we get to the basketball, Coach Mitchell raised a point this afternoon. There was a football coach, Nick Mata. I know we don't talk football. I got a whole other group that talks football. But Nick Mata at West Mecklenburg left his head football coaching job, guys, to go to South Carolina to become an assistant. And I asked him, why would you do such a thing? He said, I make more money. So I looked it up. And he makes more money as an assistant coach in at Indian Land, which is a smaller uh, 3A school, I believe, is in South Carolina, than he would as a head coach in Charlotte. And Coach Mitchell, you also found some similar numbers. I mean, can you speak to that a little bit? I did. Um, I've been a, a head coach in CMS for 22 years, and I make the exact same amount as a first-year coach, so there's no step increase. So if you coach basketball, it doesn't matter what school, you all make the same amount, and that amount is $3,450 for the whole and how, season. <clears throat> how is that tax, Coach? 48%. Uh, yeah. It's tax like a bonus. Um, actually, I lose money coaching basketball. The expenses that you have, the day-to-day -day expenses, you know, driving back and forth to practice, you know, six days a week, that kind of stuff. You end up losing money as a coach. And most coaches, you know, we say we don't do it for the for the income because it's surely it's not it's not going to pay a mortgage, you know. <clears throat> um, but it is it is nice to to be able to bring home a little bit of money. Um, and Rock Hill, a head basketball coach, makes seventy three hundred dollars, so almost double. And in Union County, they make $7,400. And the difference between Rock Hill and Union County is they get three paid positions. They get a head coach, a JV coach, and an assistant coach. And here in Charlotte, we get two positions. You get a head coach and a JV coach. And so if you have a staff such as Mike Kraft with nine assistant coaches, you know, seven of those coaches or eight of those coaches are, are on a voluntary, a voluntary basis. So, you know, you're trying to, to ask coaches to come in and help your program and, and put all this time in when they're not, you know, you can't pay them anything. So how, how you know, does that make you, how does that make you feel as a coach uh, here in Charlotte when you see coaches in smaller systems making demonstrably more money than you are? I mean, it, it is definitely um, a little frustrating. Um, I think I've been in Charlotte long enough where, you know, making a, a jump over to the South Carolina, you know, isn't really smart at this point. I've got eight years left to retirement. Might as well retire up here, then go down there in eight years and, you know, double dip. Double dip, yeah. <laughs> right. Um, 
but even some counties, I think Cabarrus County, their coaches go off of um, uh, how many years experience you have. So you get a paid a little bit more each year that you have mm -hmm. more experience. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I would like, I would like CMS to, to, you know, catch up with everybody else in, in the state and in the country and, and pay coaches, you know, what they're worth. You know, if we really put it down, you're getting paid $3,400 for a four month season, but the majority of your coaches do this year round. So yeah, there's season, no such thing as a four month. Right, yeah. so you're actually working for free the rest of the month. Yeah. So if you actually put the, the hours in that you're working year round with yeah. the money that you're making, you're probably making about 50 cents an hour. Coach Lewis, you hear that, what's your reaction? Well, we all say coaches do it for the love of the game, but at the same time, you think they should be compensated accordingly for their merit and also their tenure. I mm -hmm. think the main thing is you look at the school systems in South Carolina, just south of Charlotte. Look mm -hmm. at the school systems in Rock Hill, Fort Mill. The schools are big, beautiful schools are investing not only in the academics, but they're also investing heavily into the sports facilities. I mean, all the schools down there have great gym facilities, extra courts, and you compare it to the North Carolina side, especially in the Charlotte Metro um, area, the schools are sort of outdated. You haven't seen a really a big investment made into the schools. And the coaches in Charlotte, Mecklenburg area, to me, are the best coaches in the state. They should be rewarded accordingly. Yeah, we. You know what else I would like to see, Langston, which would be um, thinking outside the box a little bit. But you know, there's quite a few schools that don't fund that don't feel JV programs. Mm -hmm. So there's already money set aside for JV teams or for JV stipends that mm -hmm. aren't being used. I would like mm -hmm. to see that money being put back in a pot. And for these coaches such as Vance, who is now gonna go three weeks past normal season, he's working three mm -hmm. extra weeks that some other yeah. coaches did. Maybe give those coaches a little bit of a bonus, you know, each round you go, you get, mm -hmm. you know, what, 100 bucks or, or whatever it is. But mm -hmm. there's, there's some money sitting there somewhere that I don't know what it's being used for. Yeah, I mean, I I, uh, I agree with you. And, and Coach Lewis, to your point about athletic facilities, we talked about Harding a lot on our previous show, how bad their football field was. Their gym isn't the best. And, you know, CMS is working hard trying to, to upgrade facilities, but unfortunately just not keeping pace. I don't know. I mean, a lot of people tell me CMS is too big and they need to split it to a central, the north, and the south. Things be a lot better. I don't know what the answer is, but I do think coaches need to be um, compensated more. And we're losing coaches. And coaches do play a big role. I know a lot of people get angry when, you know, they see these South Carolina coaches making $100,000. But coaches play a big role in keeping kids in school. I and mean, that's one of the biggest things they do in, in giving kids the scholarship, the scholarship off of the CMS house every year, how many millions of dollars of scholarships are generated by their athletes. And the coaches have a lot to do with that. Randall, I want to give you a shot to get in here. Uh, you have any thoughts? I mean, I agree with both both Coach Mitchell and Coach Lewis. It's I, I happen to stumble across the numbers of the South Carolina basketball um, coaches making earlier this season, and it's kind of like, what? Like, you can make that coaching basketball out there. So I mean, I completely agree. Is it's, it's time for CMS to catch up? Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the uh, upcoming state championships. And if you guys want to talk about the regionals that have just passed by, please do. As usual, we're going to start with the girls and Coach Coach Mitchell. Um, we got Newton Conover, and you called they were going to go to the finals. You said Newton Conover and Freedom, and, and I think you said Vance. And so you yeah. uh, two out of two out of three. Um, China Corn Cornwell had another monster game. She's taking her team to the finals for the first time since 1992. They're going to play Farmville Central, uh, 25 and three. The boys from Farmville also in the game, and then Vance is going to play Southeast Raleigh. Southeast Raleigh has lost three straight state championship games. They're going to be and really five hungry. five of the last six. Yeah, they're going to be really hungry to, to kind of turn this around. So is Vance running into a, a you know, a, a snowball going downhill? Does that mean do they stand a chance in this game? Well, I'm going to start off with Newton Conover and Farmville Central. Um, I think this is going to be the battle of the bigs. China Cornwell averaging 26 points, 17 rebounds. She's going to face 6'2", Amaya Joyner, who's a sophomore. Um, both teams are pretty physical. Um, Farmville Central is on an 18-game win streak. Um, Newton Conover is on a 20-game win streak. Newton Conover has only lost to one 3A and one 4A school. Um, and they both average crazy numbers. I mean, um, Newton Conover is averaging 66 points a game, and their average margin of victory is 26 points. And 
Farmville Central is averaging 71 points a game. That's like boys basketball. Girls don't normally average 71 points a game. That's a lot of scoring. Um, and they're also average win margin is 26 points. I think they're going to be very similar, very well matched up. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to, I'm going to stick it with our side and I'm going to go with Newton Conover to take that one. Um, but closer to home with Vance and Southeast Raleigh, like you said, um, Southeast Raleigh has lost this, you know, the state championship game, but they've also lost the last five out of the last six state championships. So I know they're going to be carrying a chip on their shoulder. They're going to be ready to take this one home. They're led by James Madison commit, Jamia Haswell, averaging 13 points, four rebounds. UNC Chapel Hill commit, 6'2", Anya Poole, 16 points, 12 rebounds. And they also have two other players, Bobby Smith and Morgan Graham, who are averaging both about 10 points each. Um, and in the last four years, they have accumulated 114-9 to nine record, which is outstanding. They've won the last and, four straight. And, and five of those nine are in the state championship game? Right. Wow. <laughs> so I know they're going to be ready. They're going to be hungry. They're going to want this, this win. Um, Vance isn't going to be used to this, this type of situation. So I think that, um, that Vance has got a good shot as well. They've got six double-digit scores. Um, the Moreland sisters we've talked about the last couple of weeks have been huge for Vance lately. They're 6-1 and 6-2, averaging 21 points, 15 rebounds combined. And then Vance also has four double-digit scores on top of them. They have four more with uh, Kayana Morgan, Tanasia Hayes, Megan Jackson, and Leah Beringer, all averaging 10 or 11 points each. Um, and they're 80 and 32 the last four years. And the first year Donnell Ryan took over four years ago, um, Kayana Morgan was the only freshman on that team uh, that year. <clears throat> and they were seven and 17. So that was, you know, her freshman year, they were seven and 17. And they're going, mm-hmm. you know, four years later, they're playing for a state championship. So yeah. I'm, I'm, pulling, I'm pulling for Vance. I'm pulling for CMS 100%. And yeah. I'm going to say that Vance is going to upset Southeast Raleigh. Okay, so Coach Mitchell Randall is calling Vance the underdog. I don't disagree with that. I think Vance has to be careful not to have looked at Miley Creek as their state championship game on Saturday. There was a huge celebration after that game, and you're supposed to celebrate when you're in a regional championship game. But there is one more game to play, and Coach Mitchell is correct. They've never been that far. Vance's advantage is usually on the inside. Southeast Raleigh has a really good interior player. Can Vance overcome this? I think you're going to pick Noon Connor to win their game. We got a 6'4 senior going against a 6'2 sophomore. But talk about it, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm going with China Cornwell. Obviously, she's been unstoppable all season long. Should be state player to you. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to stop. So I, you're absolutely right. I'm going with Noon Conover. But I did pick Vance yesterday to win. I thought the game would be a little bit closer. Um, the defense gets it done. And they added a new wrinkle in that really seemed to give Mallard Creek a lot of problems. I mean, it didn't matter who you talked to. Several people, you know, I know what defense they were running. And mm-hmm. I asked a bunch of people, and people were telling me everything. Oh, they, were, they ran the 2-3, a 1-3-1, a 3-2. And that's the best kind of defense. If you can't tell what I'm running, we're, we're doing something really well. And I think that was, the, that was the biggest takeaway from last night. It was a matchup 2-3, Randall. It was a matchup 2-3. Yeah, they went a little 2-3, and they went a little 3-2. So, it was between they, the two They went the a 1-3-1. They played a lot of zones. Yeah, I mean, they, they mixed it up and really had them confused. And, you know, you know we'll talk about the change in defenses in the boys' game as well. But, uh, you know, it was just one of those – it was one of those situations where on the defensive end, they really got it done. And and that was the difference for them yesterday. And, obviously, they celebrated, you know, because they finally beat Mallard Creek um, in, in, the, in the championship game. But I think, you know, they'll come back tomorrow, lock back in, ready to go, and, and get ready to head to Chapel Hill. I mean, yeah. Keanu Morgan, I mean, they're just all over the place. I mean, I'm super impressed with their tenacity, their athleticism, their want to, their togetherness. Um, they have what it takes to win the championship. I just think they have to believe it. And when they go play Southeast Raleigh, in which is effectively going to be a home game for Southeast Raleigh, they're going to have to overcome those moments of doubt. But I think they do have the talent. And even Clarence Johnson said after the game, he said, Langston, I think they can do it. I think they can do it. So we'll see. Randall, Vance has been on you all season. They going to win the state championship? Vance is going to get it done. I, it I, I picked them to win last week. I think, I think that the momentum continues. Mm-hmm. I'm picking them to win it all next week. Coach Mitchell, your official prediction. I got Vance. Got Vance. All right. 
All right, Coach Lewis, let's go over to the boys' side. We got some really big games. Freedom is 29-1. and one. They got an emotional win over Hunter Huss on Saturday. They're going to play Fayetteville Westover, which is 30-0. and 0. Shelby, which has not lost to a 2A team all year, is going to play the uh, defending state champions, Farmville Central, which looks like the right. juggernaut in 2A. And then we got the North Meg Lumberton game, where it looks like North Meg might be a heavy favorite. Let's save that one for last. But tell me about the first two games, Freedom Westover, Shelby, and Farmville. Well, Westover is going to be a tough matchup for them. Um, they're very athletic. They have DeMarco Dunn, who's one of the top players in the junior class. When you watch him play, he's going to remind you a lot of Josh Banks of Olympic. They mm -hmm. also have Travis Williams, 6'7", real athletic wing. Uh, they just got a lot of pieces. They're 30-0. and 0. I think that game will go to um, Westover out of Fayetteville. Um, yeah, I think it'll be very difficult for Morgan and Freedom to compete with them. They got the athlete and also the skills. To overcome it. Um, in the 2A, um, Shelby's going up against Farmville Central. As you well know, Farmville Central is one of the best teams in the state. They've only mm -hmm. lost two games this year. They went 32-0 and last year and won the state championship. But their two losses this year came to the national rank Patrick School. They lost to them in overtime at the John Wall. They also lost to Millbrook, which was a nail-biter, also at the John Wall. They're absolutely loaded. They got three guys. It's hard to contain. They got Justin Wright, who's going to North Carolina Central. They got for Quavion Smith, who is a junior um, commit to NC State, and they have one of the best unsigned seniors in the state, and Shaman Teal. And um, they've been battle-tested. They play some of the toughest teams in the state all year. I think it's it's a no-brainer. Um, I think Farmville Central going away in that one. All right. Um, Randall, um, I wanted to get your thoughts on North Meck and Lumberton. Lumberton is 26-5. and five. They haven't been to the state finals ever. This is the first time in the Final Four in more than 60 years. Their, uh, their best player is Jordan McNeil, a six-foot guy. They only have two players about 6'4". Is there any way that you would see a team like that beating North Mecklenburg in the state championship? No, absolutely <laughs> not. And, I mean, that's no disrespect to them, but the North Mech, North Mech is – they get better and better every time I see them. And yesterday was just a, a true stamp of approval of that. I mean, mm -hmm. trading, trading Williams was amazing handling the ball. You know, he gets to that mid-range jump shot, and he does, doesn't miss. You know, Tristan Maxwell gets into the mid-post a couple of times, and he looks like a pro. You know, Jeremy Gregory and Chris Ford on the inside just dominate. And I think the, the biggest surprise from yesterday was Sh Shimon Artis. He was – he knocked down five threes. He had a huge block at the end of the game. And just watching them, they have so many guys that do so many different things. And, like, it's like once you stop one of them, then another one gets going doing something else. It's just, it's just too many weapons. Yeah. Um, Rick, North Met kind of seems to North Carolina what Dorman is to South Carolina. Dorman dominated Carolina. South Carolina. They won in the, in the final, like, in a blowout over Dutch Fork. Do you kind of see the same thing with North Met this weekend against Lumberton? I do. I don't think there's any stopping. They have too many weapons. And you saw it. We sit there together. Yeah. And you look at um, Tristan Maxwell didn't have the best offensive game as far as shooting. But they have so many other guys they can rely on. And, you know, like Randall said, you know, you had um, Shaman come in, hit five threes, had 17 points, had one of the best blocks of the year, probably the play of the year for North Mech. Sure. Let's think about this. The score was 75 to 70. Yes. Olympic steals the ball. Going down with two minutes to go, it could have been 75, 72. It would have changed the momentum. Mm -hmm. And um, Shaman blocks it, goes off the backboard. North Mech gets to rebound, goes in for a layup at 77 to 70. And the game is pretty much over. But, you know, they just have so many pieces. They can go inside, outside. And to me, one of the most improving guys in the state of North Carolina is Jeremy Gregory. At 15 points, 12 rebounds. He's in it. Nothing's really run for him. He's great in the pick and roll, great in the pick and pop. And also, he's really good at reading the screen. And he also knows how to pick and slip. He's just tremendous. And then, of course, you have um, Traden Williams is probably the most underrated point guard in the state of North Carolina. No, I agree. I mean, I was blown away. I mean, I've, I've seen him three or four times now, and I'm, I'm blown away by him every time I see him. Yeah. The ball handling wizardry is able to get places. They double teamed him. He took on a double several times. He made the right play several times. He just came up with a big play every time they needed it. Um, he kind of sensed that Tristan was struggling yeah. a little bit. Um, but Jeremy Gregory, I think, is going to be a huge star in the state of North Carolina. North Carolina. Um, best, we talked about it. The best outlet passes I've seen since Candy Meeks. Great pair of hands, great basketball IQ, great defensive I mean, player too. He's a his, his hand, his hand, his hands on the pick and roll are, are absolutely amazing, and mm -hmm. and like he's not a quick leaper, but he does a great job of just 
getting getting his hand on the ball, tapping it back to himself, and that's how he gets a lot of his rebounds. Yeah, he has, and like, super, and he has these super long arms, and Coach Lewis kept making the point that his arms are always extended as, as far as they can go, and that helps him play a little taller than his 6'6 six, six or 6'7. Six, right. So I'm sorry, Rick. Go ahead. The, the other thing I think we ought to really um, give compliments to is Chris Ford. He's the glue guy, in mm -hmm. my opinion, for North Mech. And he was guarding Josh Banks in the second half. Yes. And Josh Banks had 13 in the first half. I think he only had like four points in the second half. But I do think Chris Ford is really underrated as far as just being a tough-as-nails glue guy. But yeah. his defensive pressure that he put on Josh Banks should be also mentioned in the in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, um, Christy, the IMEC, you talk about it a lot. Um, shout out to Josh Banks, too. 1,750 <laughs> points for his career, which is an Olympic school record. Uh, Christy, you talk about the IMEC conference a lot. Vance won the state football championship. Vance's girls are going for the state basketball championship. And North Mac's boys are going for the state championship. I mean, what is it about that conference? I don't know, but the, <laughs> they're really good. Mm -hmm. I mean, in, in almost every sport. I, yeah, I don't even know what to say about it. I mean, they've got some athletes up there. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing run to think that all that talent, you know, even just between Mallet Creek and North Mech is kind of all within a stone's throw of each other. I mean, yep. at one time that was just North Mech that had all those athletes going to it. So it's uh, it's kind of crazy. But, um, you know, shout out to, to the IMEC. I asked you guys, we're going to switch topics again. I asked you guys for your uh, Talking Preps All-Star team. Now, Twitter Nation, do not tweet out Coach Mitchell's picks or – at Charlotte Preps Player of the Year. This is Coach Mitchell's picks and Coach Randall's picks and Coach Lewis's picks. We'll have our picks later on when the All Observer team debuts. I think we're going to put it out on Easter this year. But Coach Mitchell, you can start out. And give us your, your, I ask you guys for five players of the Coach and Player of the Year. Who do you have on the Coach Mitchell All Star team? Well, actually, um, Randall and I did it together. Okay. We started, right. we started going back and forth, and my list was too long. I kept saying, well, what about this kid? What about this kid? I mean, yeah. there's Welcome so much world. talent right here that it's really, really, really hard to make an all-star team. And I, I thought at first, I was like, well, maybe I should stick with all seniors. And then I said, well, maybe I should do it by position. And so I kind of followed like Randall's lead. We kind of bumped back and forth. So I'm going to let Randall announce the, the all-star all right. team. All right. <laughs> All right, let's go around the uh, We went player of the year, China Cornwell. Um, she, she, she was our player of the year for obvious reasons that we've talked about several times in this, on this show. Um, we went Nevaeh Brown on, on our team, as well as Nyla McGill. And Nevaeh Brown, Malik, Malik, Malik Creek, Nevaeh. What did you say? No, yeah, okay. from Mallard okay. Creek, yeah. Okay. Exactly. And, and then, then uh, from Providence. I just want people to know where they're coming from. Nyla, right. Yeah, Nyla McGill from Providence, Nevaeh Brown from Mallard Creek. Um, who were the last two, Coach? Jessica Timmons, Jessica North Jessica Timmons Met. at North Met. Yeah, Jessica Timmons at North Met. And Reagan Richardson at Cannon. There we go. Ooh, that's a, I don't that's know a why I had that brain for even I, as bad a coach as I am, I could coach that group together and probably win a state championship. It wouldn't be too bad. <laughs> All right, Randall, did you do a And we one? said um, we, we gave um, Donnell Ron the, the coach of the year. Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good call, good call. Um, CJ, CJ Johnson did a great job as well at Miley Creek. I think they overachieved not having a, a, a really true big for him and being a relatively young team, you know what he did. Um, Randall, did you do a separate boys team as well? Coach Lewis and I pretty much had the same boys team. <laughs> okay. We had right. one minor difference, so I'll let Coach Lewis go first, and then I'll All right. we can talk about my difference. <laughs> All right. Go ahead, Coach. What you got? Okay. First guy is A.J. Smith, 6'4", guard, combo guard, um, averaged 28 points a game and probably around seven rebounds. He, he's one of, the, one of the best scoring guards in the state. He's so strong. Mm -hmm. He's so physical. Mm -hmm. he, he was an easy pick as well. Um, Point guard, I went with Traden Williams um, mm -hmm. as also on the um, all observer team, in my opinion. No, 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 no. The Traden. all observer team, the all Rick Lewis team. All Rick Lewis <laughs> team. Don't get me in trouble. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Traden Williams from North Mech. Um, I think he's the, the straw that serves the drink for North Mech. Um, he is so quick with the ball. But, you know, they talk about NBA analytical, like the mid range game is, is probably the worst shot to take. For Traden Williams, that's his best shot, and he probably has the best mid-range game I've seen in quite some time. He's really good at that. I like Patrick Wessel, the seven-foot guy, is sophomore over at um, Butler. 
Mm -hmm. He averaged a double-double, 18 points, 12 rebounds, and almost three and a half blocks per game. Mm -hmm. Also, Tristan Maxwell's on my list. I think Tristan, mm -hmm. again, is underrated. We know he can score, but like mm -hmm. what we saw this last weekend in the game against Olympic, he had eight rebounds, five assists. He is a really good defensive rebounder for the guard position. And mm -hmm. also, Josh Banks, um, Josh Banks, as we know, he can score from the perimeter. He's a good three-point shooter. He can drive. He's a mismatch, electric, very athletic. So he's in there. And then my my MVP for the year goes to Jaden Bradley of Cannon. And he, to me, makes everybody better. Won the state championship. Is one of the best players in the country as far as a point guard is concerned. All right, Randall, what was your difference? My difference, I had, I had Jaden Bradley player of the year. AJ Smith, Tristan, trading. Uh, you know the difference that I had. I went Randy Johnson over Patrick. Of course, Wessler. of course you went Randy Johnson. <laughs> hey, of course I, he I, picked I the did. guy from it, Charlotte. Yeah. Latin. Of course. And the and the crazy part is, I'm sure that when I see Patrick on Tuesday night, I'm gonna hear all about how <laughs> I took him off my my all all star team. So I don't know. I'm gonna get an earful on Tuesday night. But that was the only switch that I had. Randy Randy had a great year over at Charlotte Latin, leading he them did. to the final, and uh, was did. amazing in that game. And I uh, feel like really deserved it. Yeah, one of Lake, the best Lake's performances is, I've seen this year in the state finals, Randy Johnson. Go ahead. I, I was going to put Randy, but I said, I know Randall's going to pick him. So <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, there you have it, guys. That That's that's not the Charlotte Preps all-star team. That's the Rick Lewis, so. Randall, and Coach Mitchell all-star team. So when you put it out on Twitter, that's what you say. Uh, we're going to go to 45-second shot clock right now. We just got one from Mr. Randall. Take it away. Um, I just want to say congratulations to Coach Lewis and, and the North Mech Vikings. Watching them play yesterday, was that was a, a truly fun game. They did a great job. And, hats, you know, hats off to Coach Terry. You One thing you know about Olympic and, and the team coached by Coach Terry is they're going to play hard for 32 minutes. Those guys were down by 23 points in the, in the, in the fourth quarter. And, uh, you know, they switched up their defense and, and never gave up. And they just played hard. And, and you hated that, that one team had to lose. Uh, Josh Banks w was amazing uh, all season long. And to be down 23 and, and to make it a one-possession game and almost be right there, it just, just hats off to those guys. And, and congratulations to North Mech again on, on making it to the state final. Yeah. Um, Coach Lewis had a state championship this weekend for the teams that aren't in an association right. up at uh, Combine Academy. I understand it went really well. Yeah. And uh, Josh Hall and Moravian Prep won the title. Did, who they beat in the finals, Coach? Combine. Come beat Jeff McGinnis' combine the Camden final. Yeah. I thought that was a great idea, great event to, to give. Because some of the best players in the state play for those schools. We can't recognize them in, in our thing a lot over here. But some of the very best players in the state, Josh Hall and, um, and Isaiah Todd, are probably one and two in the, in the state of North right. Carolina. And they, they both met in that game. It was a one-point game, the, I believe. In the semifinals. Yeah. It yeah, was a so, great game. Uh, yeah, so shout out to that. And I understand we're making some progress in our city championship, Metro championship, uh, Coach Mitchell, Coach Lewis. Is that true? Um, I have four private school teams confirmed and two public schools. So um, we're working on it. Getting close. And, uh, and uh, it would be probably on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday before Christmas. Coach Mitchell, any, uh, any, any news on the girls' side? No, I just finished my season, so I'm all, I'm gonna get with Rick, and we're gonna. <laughs> hey, I tried to take a week off. I needed to be able to breathe for a little bit, so I took a week uh, off. So you deserve hey, it. You deserve it. Langston, one game that probably might be the most intriguing game at the um, state playoffs is the 1A competition between Henderson Collegiate and Winston Salem Prep. Henderson mm -hmm. Collegiate is in Henderson, North Carolina, very rural area. It's a 1A charter. This is only their third year in existence. Last wow. year, they lost in a state championship on uh, one point to Bishop McGinnis. Mm -hmm. They played a brutal schedule. They're 26 and 10, but they've lost to teams like Moravian Prep, Combine. <laughs> they also beat um, Independence earlier in the wow. season. Wow. Now, they're going up against Winston-Salem Prep, who this is their third trip to the to the championship in the mm -hmm. last four years. Mm -hmm. They won it once, lost, and they're back again. So that, to me, may be one of the best state championship games 
down there between all the classifications. Yeah, Winston-Salem Prep is not a private or charter school. It's a public school, but it is a oh. magnet school, so they can draw from, uh, Winston-Salem is open enrollment, so they can draw from with the, from whomever in Winston-Salem. And there's always a bunch of controversy about that team, much like there is with Charlotte Catholic here in Charlotte, but they definitely do have a phenomenal basketball program. I did see the tail end of their uh, state semifinal win on Saturday. Um, they had a, a the team they were playing had a shot to win there at the end, but they, they're a really good team, and I agree with you. That's going to be one of the better games. I'm looking forward to getting up to the state championships this weekend and, and seeing, you know, one of our uh, five teams comes back to championships. Um, I, I think we're going to have at least three. I think we're going to have at least three. So um, we'll, we'll talk about it next week in our uh, last show of the season. It's gone by fast, guys. But, uh, we'll get back together. Thank you, Langston. Sounds good. Sounds Thank good. you. All right. All right. Take care. All right. See ya.